Let me admit something about myself. I love stories about a person who looks at some big daunting system and figures out a way to beat it. You know, it's basically like Star Wars, right? Luke says, hey, that Death Star thing, that looks pretty scary and complicated. Looks tough to beat. But thankfully, they left this long missile-sized shaft that leads right to the central exploding zone. I'm a total sucker for those stories. Like the guy in the 1980s who spent months watching and pausing VHS recordings of the TV game show Press Your Luck, eventually figuring out that all of the patterns on the board kept repeating themselves. He somehow became a contestant and kept winning and winning and winning and winning because he knew what was coming. He won so much that time ran out and they had to break it into multiple episodes. In the end, Michael Larson won over $110,000 in 1984, well over a quarter of a million dollars in today's money. Or when some students and a professor at MIT figured out a way to win at blackjack and traveled to Vegas as a team to win millions and millions of dollars. Their story was told in the book Bringing Down the House by Ben Mesrick, later turned into the movie 21. In fact, there are a lot of uh, books by Ben Mesrick uh, where he tells this story. Great. He's the best at telling this kind of story. Uh, Straight Flush is about a group of college students and the rise of multi-million dollar online poker sites. Ugly Americans is about how a young American trader raided the Asian markets for millions of dollars. Uh, the Accidental Billionaires, uh, about the creation of Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg and the Winklevoss twins, later made into the movie The Social Network. And then the book recently that came out, Bitcoin Billionaires, was also about the Winklevoss twins, their follow-up venture into Bitcoin that made them billionaires all over again. I love these stories. I love this stuff. It's those stories for some random person finding a market inefficiency or a little hole in the rules that they can turn into a fortune. That's the best. That brings us to GameStop. As you may know, GameStop is a basically a brick and mortar retailer of physical video games, often located inside of malls, operating in the year 2021, a year where most video games are just downloaded or streamed, and a year where half of the malls are closed because of this pandemic thing we've got going on. I will say, I have a nine-year-old son, so I'm at GameStop 14 times a week. But the overall picture is not exactly what Wall Street would think of as a promising business model, even though it's a good Texas company with good Texas people. Because of the way the market has changed, the stock had been stalled at about two to four bucks a share from mid-2019 to mid-2020. Also because of this, a lot of big hedge funds had been shorting the stock for a long time. They're basically betting the stock would go down, which seemed like a pretty decent bet. You've probably seen that it wasn't such a decent bet, and now multi-billion dollar hedge funds are on the brink of bankruptcy because of it. Let me walk you through the story. There's a subreddit called Wall Street Bets that has made news from time to time over the years, basically because people were betting big money on highly volatile things like penny stocks, and then, you know, they document all the crazy highs and lows associated with it. These guys talk about their crazy bets out in the open all the time. And they're just sort of like intentionally jerks about it. Like, it's basically if Twitter trolls ran CNBC. But some of these guys are really smart. They were pissed off that these big hedge funds were betting against GameStop, and they figured out a way to screw with the hedge funds and get very rich in the process. They found out a couple of things that were unique to GameStop. It didn't have a lot of shares available. The price of each share was pretty low. And these hedge funds had bet against the stock so much that if this price started going up for GameStop, the funds that were trying to bet against it were totally screwed and things were going to spiral out of control. Obviously, if a bunch of message board people all start buying the same stock at the same time, it might go up a little bit. And as long as they're just posting about it in public and not coordinating in some illegal way, that's totally fine. But it starts spiraling out of control because of the short selling of the hedge funds. Let me explain short selling here with Super Bowl tickets. Let's say you didn't have any Super Bowl tickets. Now, this is really hard and foreign for me because I, of course, do have Super Bowl tickets. But let me try to understand this strange and distant world that you exist in for just a moment. Let's say you have... I love doing that to people. Let's just say you have zero Super Bowl tickets. But you place an ad anyway that says, I have 10 Super Bowl tickets and I will sell them to you for $10,000 a piece. And then... You sell the tickets and tell everyone you'll bring the tickets to their house in a couple of days. Well, why would you do that? Well, you're betting that you can buy 10 Super Bowl tickets from somebody else 
for $5,000 in between. Then you'd take those tickets you bought for $5,000 and then sell them to the first group of people for $10,000 a piece. Nice little profit there, right? Nice and easy. That's more or less what's going on with these hedge funds and GameStop. The problem is, when you go to buy the 10 Super Bowl tickets you thought you were going to buy for $5,000, they weren't available for that price. Instead, there was only one available for $15,000. So you panic and you buy that one for $15,000, way more than you paid for it. Well, now everyone else is doing the same thing. They're looking to buy tickets fast because they're getting so high. And that makes tickets go to $20,000 and then $25,000 and on and on and on it goes. Every time you have to buy a ticket to cover your ass from the initial sale, you are causing the price to go higher. With stocks, they call it a short squeeze. And it can make prices go up and out of control. And that's what happened with GameStop's stock. It jumped from 4 bucks a share to about 18 bucks a share at the beginning of the year. And then it doubled in the next three weeks to about $40 a share. Then it doubled again in the next four days. Then it doubled again in the next two days. And then it doubled again today. GameStop, this old school video game company, has gone from four bucks a share to 350 bucks a share, which most of those gains happening in the past couple of weeks. And some of the original investors on the subreddit Wall Street Bets have become multi-millionaires because of it. Yesterday, it was reported that the guy who originated this strategy threw 50,000 bucks into it, his entire life savings. It was up to $15 million, and that was before the stock doubled today. As I said, I love stories like this, but a lot of it depends on how you look at it. You can cheer this on because it feels like an exercise in pure capitalism. It's an underdog story. It's a story of people outsmarting the system and making millions within the rules. What's better than that? What's interesting, though, is that there is a real tinge of leftist revenge involved in this as well. A lot of the chatter is about how they just want to punish those evil rich people. Income inequality, after all. In some ways, it seems to be less about making money for some of these guys than it is for taking money away from the billionaires that they don't like. And here's the larger problem and how it affects you. Billionaires really don't like having their hedge funds blow up in their faces. Billionaires have lots of powerful connections and friends. And Democrats are in power. They tend to like to use their power to help their rich friends and not to mention make dramatic statements against capitalism. I can't imagine they're just going to let all of this happen. Just so far today, this crappy White House and their underrated press secretary, Jen Psaki, said that they are monitoring the situation around GameStop. Hmm. A state securities regulator from Massachusetts says the stock should be halted for 30 days. And individual trading platforms, including reportedly Robinhood itself, has stopped allowing some trades of GameStop. It's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. And if instead of an eye, it's three billion dollars, it gets even uglier. I fully expect the Biden administration to use examples like this to explain how, quote unquote, unfettered capitalism is ruining lives. After all, it's easy to cheer against a hedge fund billionaire, but pensions and retirement accounts are in hedge funds, too. When that teacher or firefighter gets pulled on TV after their entire life savings is wiped out because some guy on Reddit thought it would be funny... It's going to be hard to push back against a slew of new regulations, regulations Biden and Janet Yellen want already. Never let a crisis go to waste. This is that phrase in action. Sure, it feels really good now, and I love watching the stories. I love watching those account balances go crazy. But a snapback is coming from this, and I don't know if it's going to be good for anyone, except maybe me, because I might get an awesome new Ben Mesrick book out of it. I went on Twitter to formally request a Ben Mesrick book about GameStop. And wouldn't you know, that request was liked by the one and only Ben Mesrick. Sure, capitalism might ultimately be destroyed, but at least we'll get a great book out of it. Hi, Stu Gear of Stu Does America here. Thanks so much for watching our video. Did you know you could watch our entire catalog for free right here on our channel? Subscribe now and be sure to hit the thumbs up button on all the episodes you watch because that's how they know you like this stupid show. And that little bell in the corner as well. Make sure you click that. You'll get notifications every time we post new content. Stu Does America every weekday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here.